to take a picture, but with a digital man. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, then like I said, well, of course, the music. So an image like this to get the, the bear claws, um, many, many hundreds of photos, several hundred, um, to pick out the one that I like. Um, use a long lens, 500 millimeter lens. Um, I use a monopod for this because I wanted to be very mobile. I didn't want to have a cumbersome tripod. Um, depth of field and shutter speed is difficult because usually where the grizzly bears are, there's low light. There's not a lot of light, so um, uh, it's a higher ISO setting. Um, the full frame camera allows to do that. You can kind of go higher with the ISO to get the shutter speed and the depth of field. Um, it was my first time photographing like this, but it was a goal that I had when I went on this trip the second time. It was the first time I didn't have that kind of lens to use and I didn't really have the... I guess I didn't have the thought that I wanted to get a photo like this until I went the second time and then it was kind of like a new goal. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's really the story. It's just uh, a, lot of, a lot of volume and then picking and choosing when I looked at the photos on the computer. So do you spend many days trying to get the uh, picture? Three so days. Three days. Yeah. And every day, like how many hours? Or? Uh, for, the, for, for a photo like this, probably one to two hours each of those three days. Yeah. And then photographing other compositions of grizzly bears in those three days, just doing different things. Because they do weird things at weird times and you just never know. They're, all, they're unpredictable. That's the thing that I like about wildlife is that there's, there's, like, there's, there's no rules. You never know when they're going to lay down on a log or when they're going to pick open a clam. And, um, yeah, that's, that's the, the part that I enjoy the most about it is that it's, uh, it's always a surprise. So these, for, these pictures were taken here in B.C.? Or? They're in B.C., yeah, in the Kutsumatin. Uh, there's a grizzly bear sanctuary. It's a provincial park about 40 kilometers northeast of Prince Rupert. Um, there's two commercial tour operators that that operate in the the, uh, the Kutsmatian. And I went on Ocean Lake, and if the, take a float plane to fly to their boat, and then a Zodiac to get into the estuary. So it, it was an effort to get there to where the where the action is, quote unquote. But um, yeah, it's uh, it's well worth it. It's worth the effort to get there. And uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, BC, right here in BC. Thank you very much. However, it doesn't, that's why I was happy I want to see the music. Hello, uh, my name is Katrina Pavlovsky and I'm a photographic artist and I'm talking to you on Ultimate Night of a show called Ringing Beauty. It's a collaborative effort between myself and Dave Hutchison at Dale's Gallery on August the 6th. It's my first show and um, I'm very excited about it. Uh, my work primarily deals with uh, floral images, seascapes, wildlife, and uh, the sacred. This particular image uh, was taken at Ross Bay Cemetery, and uh, angels uh, are very important to me personally. Uh, when I uh, work as a photographic artist, I'm frequently uh, inspired. And the angels at Ross Bay Cemetery, there are two of And when I saw this particular angel, I immediately photographed it uh, because I really find it very interesting from an architectural point of view. 
and uh, they're no longer being sculpted in this way. And the ancient, the angel, and the the uh, figure, and the way the angel is uh, holding one hand over her heart, spoke to me very strongly. So I now have a series of this particular angel at different seasons so they're, because they change and in the fall the ground has a yellow brownish color behind her in the winter the leaves don't uh, aren't out on the trees this particular one was taken in the summer uh, so she's the tree really frames her um, all 12 months of the year but in the summer the, the leaves of the trees really frame this particular angel and the Cooley family is the family that erected this angel. Um, um, I think it was built in uh, approximately 1905. And um, I called it the guardian because uh, a lot of people pay homage to this particular angel at Ross Bay. I frequently go there. And uh, sometimes there's flowers at her feet, or somebody will put uh, flowers on her shoulders. And on Thanksgiving, there were pots of pansies at her feet and also on her shoulders. And I thought that was really beautiful. So I think she offers a spiritual comfort and significance to a lot of different people. And uh, the reception that I have experienced from people has been wonderful. I'm really honored that I'm having that experience. So, um, this particular uh, photographic image was also taken at Ross Bay Cemetery, and there it's of the second angel that that is there. Uh, the family name is Bossy. It's um, of Italian origin, and uh, when. Initially, when I took the photograph, I took the photograph on the front of the angel. And if you see her from the front, she's holding a wreath, a garland, in her hands, and she's looking up. What is quite interesting about this angel is that she's only standing on one foot. So, uh, she's standing on her left foot, and her right foot is poised uh, behind her. And I didn't know about the back of the angel for almost a year until I walked too far and I was heading towards the cemetery and I saw her from the back and it struck me so strongly and I knew I, I had to do something about it. And she has gained more and more significance in my life because of that. So I think that um, the depiction, the style, and the sculpture of the wing differs in detail from the rest of the body. And her whole, she's very light. Her whole presence is light. And because she's balancing on one foot, she's you can almost interpret her as an arrival or a departure. Uh, and she's mounted much higher than looking out on, uh, on from a pedestal. So, And I really thank you for this opportunity. Thank you.